very warm welcome and a very uh, good morning to all the delegates participants of this webinar my heartfelt gratitude and uh, my heart uh, heartfelt uh, gracious gracious gratitude basically to cipm uh, since last year this is our seventh outing together and uh, they have been constantly supporting us and within no time as uh, we request them uh, they are always ready to help us organize FDPs, webinars, and seminars. For that matter, a uh, 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 lot of thanks from uh, Department of Physiotherapy, Tithankar Mahavir University, to CIPM and its conveners. And a special welcome to uh, Mr. Gaurav Mishra. Uh, sir, uh, this is the second time that we have invited you as a resource person. This was a special uh, request from the side of the students since your last. Uh, session with them was really interesting and we had a very excellent feedback. Thanks for accepting our invitation. And I also uh, warmly welcome Dr. Manjula Jain, who's our Dean Academics at uh, Tithankar Mahavid University and is the president of IIC under which, whose ages we are conducting this webinar. Ma'am, you have always been a guiding source for us. I would request Uzma Sayed to please introduce Ma'am and our resource person to our delegates today. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the inaugural address for today's session uh, will be delivered by Dr. Manjula Jain. Professor Jain is a gold medalist and who holds master's and doctorate degree in management. She has extensive experience in teaching and research of 22 years to her credit. She is currently working as associate dean academic in Thakur Mahavid University, Muradabad. Dr. Jain was conferred with Academic Excellence Award. 2021 for Best Academic Leader of the Year at International Conference and Academic Excellence Award on Recent Innovation and Interdisciplinary Research by IAR ABA. She is also Industry Academia Collaboration Lead IACL of Industry Academia Collaboration Center IACC of Bosch India Foundation, Bangalore, and Tithakar Mahavir University. Professor Jain is also the treasurer of UP and UK Chapter Association of Indian Management Schools in and an active member of All India Management Association, the Freedom Sciences Institute USA, Indian Commerce Association, global member of Internet Society. We are honored to have you, ma'am. It is my pleasure to invite you for the inauguration. Thank you, dear Uzma. Thank you so much. Uh, very good, uh, good morning to all the eminent dignitaries, to our resource person, Mr. Gaurav Mishraji, uh, principal. Department of Physiotherapy, Dr. Shivani Kaul, coordinator of this event, uh, Ms. Uzma, and all the uh, members of the organizing team. I'm really very happy to see that uh, Department of Physiotherapy has been really active in organizing uh, the various kinds of activities under the flagship of IAC, and they are raising the bar in terms of uh, creating the standards on which we need to put up the level of the events under the flagship of IIC. So, uh, Tithankar Mahavir University uh, welcomes uh, our resource person for the day today. That is uh, Mr. Gaurav Mishraji. He is a IP manager and attorney from Banana IP uh, Councils, Bangalore. I'm really very happy to see you on the panel today and uh, uh, thankful on behalf of uh, university for giving your precious time and uh, this. Uh, session, I believe, would be very much useful for our uh, uh, the learning, uh, the members on this panel, the participants, and everyone who can gain uh, much knowledge from the uh, practical aspects as compared to uh, what we have been putting uh, ourselves in the teaching in terms of uh, theoretical inputs. Uh, we have been providing to our students as well as only the domain knowledge that we are putting up on the theoretical as well as the practical knowledge. But yes, I believe that uh, uh, disseminating such kind of information on intellectual property is the need of the hour. And uh, I'm really, very happy to see that Government of India Cell for IPR uh, Promotion and Management, that is CPAM, has been uh, the constant uh, uh, association with us. And uh, we would especially uh, express our gratitude to all the eminent and dynamic resource persons from their team who always uh, share their wisdom and insight on such contemporary topics with us. And the topic that I find today is uh, intellectual property protection, research paper or patent. So um, this is really very pertinent for all of us to ponder upon 
that um, uh, where are we heading for? We all have been putting a lot of uh, efforts in the research, but is that going to give us the real edge and how we need to create an awareness amongst uh, the teaching fraternity that when we do something, when we create something, how it should be pro protected. Because sometimes when we work, we find that the work when it gets published, it gives other people the ideas as well as the implications for further research. And sometimes uh, when you are not protecting your work, it becomes the work of others. And we need to check it out that how we can make uh, or we can spread the awareness about this. And uh, uh, you all will agree with one thing that our uh, NEP is also uh, putting up a lot of efforts and thrust on incorporating the skill development and uh, ability enhancement, as well as uh, they are also putting up a lot of efforts in terms of how to drive the tech-driven uh, technologies or the tech-driven approach in teaching or learning processes, along with innovation and creativity. So uh, what I believe is, IPRs and patents were very much less understood by the academicians if we take up uh, 10 to 15 years ago. But now the faculty members are being sensitized. They are being uh, made aware of how they need to patent their innovative research work. And um, I should say that the topic is really going to be very much interesting because today we have taken up, touched upon rather, those aspects which uh, were remain in the minds of uh, many of the researchers that why should we not go for the patent or why should we go for the research paper? And what I believe is just because of the lack of uh, awareness, many people thought that article publication would be a better choice as compared to coming up with a patent. Might be that there is a lack of awareness and generally, you know, uh, publishing a research paper is more... Uh, emphasized was more rather, I should say was more emphasized in the Indian universities and research institutes because we thought that it will give more visibility among the academic fraternity. But uh, uh, we used to believe that you no know, patent uh, is a very time consuming process as compared to publication. But the things are reversed now. In uh, today's scenario, if we say that, uh, yes, we can come up with the publication easily as compared to the patent, but how it is going to reward you, how it is going to make you enough, uh, uh, you know, your research work acclaimed by the fraternity only when we are able to understand the importance of patents and the knowledge regarding what are the pros of patenting or publication. And uh, uh, we all would be able to come up with this outcome. I'm very uh, you know, uh, hopeful that at the end of this session, we would be coming some, with some good deliberations. We would be coming up with some uh, meaningful conclusions. And I believe that patenting would come out as more valuable for a researcher. And it's really a very well-established fact that uh, Indian researchers seem not to value it much at present. I was going through some uh, articles and I uh, got to find out that uh, Japan is much more uh, alert on this part. And what do they do is their uh, research papers are often accompanied with a pre-filed patent application. So if they come up with any kind of uh, publication, it is already pre-filed as a patent. So publication might be having the advantages, but I say that uh, the patent can be more useful because patent gives you twin advantages. One is good publication plus intellectual property protection also. And it would also give the researcher to sell the product, whereas the paper just gives an idea of the work to the others for further research. So uh, I should say that uh, we at the university level is committed to creating an enabling system and uh, awareness for IPRs within our teacher and the student uh, community. And such kind of mechanisms would really be helpful for promoting IPR filing, as well as, uh, you know, we are also giving some financial incentives to our faculty members so that they become more and more uh, active in terms of uh, setting up these kind of 
uh, intellectual property rights for themselves. And uh, I believe that um, this FD, this uh, session by uh, Mr. Gaurav Mishraji would certainly create first level IPR awareness amongst our teachers and all the participants, young intellectuals. And uh, they would be also keeping in mind the beneficial aspects of uh, patenting and uh, creating the novel ideas and how can they protect that. So with these words, I congratulate the organizers of this session, Dr. Shivani, Ms. Uzma, and the entire organizing team, the dynamic team, I should say, and extend my blessings and best wishes to all the participants to enrich their experience, to uh, enrich their expertise, creativity, knowledge, and expand their horizons of wisdom. And I wish a very, very fruitful discussion today. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to be interacting with all of you. And uh, let us create more awareness on publication versus patenting. Thank you so much. Have a great learning ahead. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, uh, the introduction. Uh, as we all know, uh, the topic for today's uh, uh, discussion is uh, revolving on the patenting and the publication, uh, the research publication uh, of research papers. Uh, so first I will be uh, briefly touching upon the aspects of uh, patent law, uh, the uh, basic requirements and uh, what sort of inventions are protected. And then I will uh, come on to the uh, application part of it, where uh, uh, the research papers are beneficial or not beneficial, what are the pros and cons, and how can we balance out the patenting part of it and the research paper publication part of it. And how can we best uh, uh, keep our inventions uh, uh, protected uh, in the best manner so that any publication that has happened uh, uh, maybe accidentally or without with our knowledge so that can be best protected under the patent law if there is an innovation involved uh, uh, in the uh, research that has been done by the person. Uh, I will quickly share my screen and then we can start the uh, session. Yeah, so uh, first, as I mentioned that I will start with what is a patent right uh, to give a basic uh, understanding uh, of the subject and then we'll come on to the research paper and uh, the sort of uh, uh, the, the legal uh, issues that can arise because of uh, publication uh, vis vis patent law, we'll discuss those in detail. So uh, to begin with, patent is one of the uh, rights uh, under the basket of intellectual property law. Uh, intellectual property law, we all know that it is something which is a creation of mind, uh, which, which, which is evolving from the someone's brain. So that is the reason we call it an intellectual property uh, as compared to a traditional property, which is, which is a real estate or anything, anything which is uh, tangible in nature. So that the intellectual property is intangible in nature. As far as patent right is concerned, uh, this is uh, something which is a negative right, which means that it excludes others uh, from uh, practicing that invention. Uh, what, what, what does it mean is that uh, if I am the patent holder, then only I will be entitled to uh, exercise the rights under the patent and I can exclude any person uh, by ex uh, from exercising that patent in the territory. Now, when I say territory, uh, it means that patent is a territorial right. <clears throat> now, territorial right is something which is only conferred in one jurisdiction. So when I'm filing a patent in India, then I can only exercise the right uh, of uh, patent in India only. I cannot exclude somebody sitting in the US uh, from exercising my right of patent. So if I'm a patent holder in India, if, I'm a, if I were granted patent in India, uh, that exercise or the exclusion of others from uh, using the patent is only limited to the Indian territory. Uh, of course, we are we have uh, several options to extend the protection uh, across the uh, major nations in, in across the major, major nations in the world, uh, which are uh, uh, practically what happens is uh, it is not possible for one person to file uh, the application for patent all across the world. So because of that perspective, there are certain conventions like you have the Paris Convention, uh, which was signed between the uh, nations, the member nations, then you have the uh, patent cooperation treaty as well, uh, which enables the filing of uh, PCT applications. So what it does is it allows one person from uh, for uh, to file an application of patent or to extend the protection of the patent 
in multiple countries by maintaining the same priority date. So assuming, uh, let's say I file the patent application uh, in India on 1st of March. Uh, now, as I mentioned that practically it is not possible for me to enter all the territories or all the nations on the same day because I have to engage uh, hundreds of attorneys uh, uh, to file those applications uh, on the same day and they all have to file it on the same day and to coordinate the, on the same day then only I'll be able to secure the date. So to make it convenient, uh, there is a concept of Paris Convention application and PCT application, of course. So what it does is after I file the application in any of the country which are member to these conventions, uh, I have a window of 12 months to enter the member territory. So today I file uh, uh, in India, then from within 12 months, I have to enter other territories, let's say United States, United Kingdom, Australia, and all those countries which are member uh, to the Paris Convention or the PCT or the PCT Convention. So in that case, uh, within 12 months, I can enter any time and I will maintain today's date, the day on which I filed the application in India. So that way it has become uh, more feasible and more practical for one person to enter into different territories by maintaining the same date. So uh, on the next uh, uh, right, which is available is assignable or licensable right. right? So as I mentioned, after territorial, uh, which is essentially uh, subject to only one territory, it can only be performed in one territory. Now the next right is assignable or licensable. So this is like the traditional properties. This can be assigned and licensed. Or so assignable is mean it means that it can be sold to anybody, uh, and uh, in in, in uh, for its entire term of the patent. So if the patent protection is granted for 20 years, I can sell it for the entire protection from the day when it is granted. So, or even before that also, I can assign it to somebody and that person can prosecute the patent application. Uh, licensable is something which, uh, uh, which is essentially is that we can license the patent to somebody else and that person can uh, use the patent on our behalf, on my behalf. So uh, that is something which is licensable and license application of course can be uh, in different uh, areas also, depending on uh, the invention. So if, if to give you an example, uh, uh, like the there are motor blades uh, uh, or the motor, uh, the concept of motor is there in the uh, electric shavers also, then it can be on electric toothbrush also. So there are multiple applications of uh, uh, the uh, of your technology in multiple industries. So you can uh, grant an exclusive license or you can grant a non-exclusive license. You can grant it only in India or you can cover all the world's territory uh, to grant a license to a particular uh, uh, company. So that is something which, uh, which is also uh, available under the patent law. Now, uh, patent, we know it is one of the most important IPR. Now, the reason behind is that uh, it is an exclusive or a negative right. It excludes everybody. Uh, so none of the other persons can use if uh, I am the patent holder in a particular technology. That technology can only be used by me and only if I allow others, then only uh, is a situation where others can use. Now, the fundamental uh, objective of patent law uh, emanates from the, uh, the fundamental that uh, when we give something to the inventors or the innovators, uh, then only we will get something in return. So here, by way of a patent right, we are giving a limited monopoly right to the inventors. And in return, uh, the inventors are giving you the invention by uh, uh, investing their time, efforts, and money. Uh, they take years to research, and they take they take a lot of uh, uh, they put in a lot of hard work to create inventions, uh, which become then patentable. And uh, so, uh, essentially, what happens is they have been they are rewarded by granting a limited monopoly right, and in turn, the public gets rewarded by uh, getting access to those technology. And uh, after twenty years, when the uh, the patent lapses. Uh, and it falls into public domain, then any person can use that particular patent uh, without the, uh, the patent holder's uh, permission. So that is the incentive uh, uh, of the uh, patent law. It is essentially to innovate and uh, contribute in innovation of the technology in the country. Now we are uh, like, uh, I'm sure you all would be aware uh, uh, that we are surrounded by patents in everyday life, like from, uh, nail clippers to uh, the fans there are these days we have a lot of ai technologies you see uh, uh, these robo vacuum cleaners and robo moppers so all those things are uh, covered by the patent you have then again uh, there is google home 
there is Alexa, which is uh, which is a like a type of an AI technology uh, because it is artificial intelligence. It works on certain uh, inputs and outputs given by the user. So there are different technologies like uh, whether it is AI, whether it is cellular technology, whether it is mechanical, automobile. There are multiple applications, uh, multiple industries where patent can be granted. Uh, even pharmaceutical is another uh, industry which is there and chemical industry so uh, uh, that is uh, that covers the patent right <clears throat> now uh, before going further uh, i would like to uh, uh, like briefly touch upon the concepts uh, the uh, important terms under the patent law now what does patent mean it, it means uh, an invention that is granted under the patent law uh, in india so now, in, so all inventions cannot be patented. There are because what happens is those inventions may not uh, fulfill the criteria granted under the act, uh, given under the act. So uh, as far as invention is concerned, now invention has to uh, satisfy three criteria. One is novelty uh, or the newness of the invention. Then you have inventive step and the uh, utility or the industrial application. So by novelty, it means that uh, uh, it is new in. Uh, all sense that particular invention has not existed. Uh, then secondly, you have the inventive step. Now, inventive step is something which involves a technical advancement of the technology over and above the existing technology. Now, if you see uh, the simple example of uh, uh, telephone. So earlier we used to have ha hand uh, landline uh, phones. Then we have those cordless phones. Then there is then we saw the mobile phones. Then we have smart phones. So those are like sort of advancement of technologies. Then uh, these days, uh, number of phones have come, which are smartphones, and then uh, 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 they also work on AI technologies as well. Like you have those uh, Siri and your Google. Uh, okay, Google is there, which uh, which which are like uh, which are in AI enabled technology, and uh, so those are something which are advancement of technologies, and uh, that is uh, in the patent uh, law terminologies we call it an inventive step. Now, the last one is your industrial application. Now, industrial application is something uh, which means that it can be applied in any industry. It can be sold commercially in the market. So that is uh, uh, an industrial application. Now, as I mentioned, novelty, it, it means that it should not form part of the state of art or it should not be published as a patent in India or anywhere else. So if something uh, I want to patent in that particular Invention is already covered by an existing patent, uh, whether filed or uh, whether granted in the past. That uh, that would actually kill the novelty of my invention because if something is already applied for or registered, then in that case, uh, my invention cannot be classified as novel. Uh, next is your inventive step. As I mentioned, that it involves a technical uh, 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 contribution to the existing technology, and we discuss a. a the example of telephone itself. Last is again industrial application. Uh, we have covered that as well. Uh, now, as far as uh, the uh, patent subject matter is concerned, now what sort of patents can be granted under the Patents Act? Now, uh, in Patents Act in India, there are no specific uh, provision which provides that X Y Z patent uh, cannot be granted uh, can be granted. But rather, what it does is there are two sections one is section three and one is section four which covers a list of patents uh, a list of inventions which cannot be granted a patent under the patents act uh, so those are like the uh, exhaustive provisions exhaustive uh, uh, sections which cover the list of inventions that will not be granted patents uh, to give you give some examples uh, uh, something which is contrary to the natural law so something that is contrary to the laws of motion uh, uh, that cannot be patented. Uh, then again, if something uh, uh, that is just a, a computer program, so computer program per se cannot be uh, granted a patent because that is something which is a subject matter of copyright. Uh, again, a business method is not patentable in India. So like a method of, uh, let's say, selling online groceries or, uh, uh, or selling anything online, uh, that is a sort of type of method or even ordering food online or by mobile app that is something which is a business method and that that is that cannot be a patent under the patent side of course there are uh, business methods are patentable in some countries but in india business methods are specifically barred from patenting 
then again something which is already covered by other laws uh, for example copyright so any artistic work or any cinematograph film or anything uh, any literary work cannot be uh, subject matter of patent law uh, that cannot be granted a patent under the patent act because of uh, the restriction imposed in the pat in the patent act uh, similarly you have the method of agriculture or method of conducting a surgery uh, all these things are not patentable uh, so those are those lists list are provided under the section 3 uh, of the patents act section 4 is something which is pertaining to atomic energy uh, so if any invention that uh, uses the atomic energy or that something which is related to atomic energy then uh, what happens is because of national security purposes uh, those patents are not granted or not published and a lot of time the government uh, takes over those patents because of the national security purposes so those are specifically pat uh, the patents which are uh, which cannot be granted uh, or rather inventions which cannot be granted patent under the patents act moving on i'll just give a couple of examples and then we'll uh, uh, come to the uh, the topic of the day uh, now this is something which we have which we see almost uh, like regularly this is a packet saver we see in those uh, pizza boxes uh, there's a small uh, uh, like a protection given on the lid uh, which is which we keep it on the pizza and it protects the content of the pizza from touching the ceiling of the box so this is an invention that was granted patent in 1985 in the us so this is a very simple example that the inventions need not be complex in nature and uh, even a simple innovation can also be granted a patent now in the next slide i will give you an example of an inventive step or uh, the in innovation in this particular area itself now this is a, a pizza serving aid a pizza uh, uh, package protector or also a serving aid so what it does is it not only uh, protects the content of the pizza from uh, touching the uh, the ceiling of the box but there is a serving aid which is given if you see there are three legs and one of the legs that is 20 and 18 mark 20 and 18 uh, this can be used to cut the pizza also so this is again uh, there is uh, an in innovation uh, in the existing uh, technology which was there so the earlier one had only the uh, packet saver uh, uh, technology which was only protecting the contents of the pizza in this one, you not only protect the content, but uh, you are able to cut the pizza with the uh, the serving aid that is given on the uh, one of the legs of the uh, packet saver. So that is something which is an uh, inventive step in the technology and even in a novelty because uh, this is uh, this has not existed before. So from that perspective, that is a novel invention. Now uh, there are these are the, some of the examples which are uh, which are there and we see them every day in our day to day life. Uh, now what are the rights that are given to the patentees? Uh, now there are two types of patents which can be granted. One is your product patent and the other one is a process patent. Uh, now product patent is something which is uh, which covers the product uh, which is which is covering a uh, manufacturing of a product. So where uh, I'm not claiming the process to manufacture the product, but the product per se, product itself. So when a product is covered by a patent, then I get the exclusive right to prevent anybody uh, from making, using, offering for sale or selling or importing uh, uh, the product in India. So that is the right that is given uh, as far as product patent is concerned. But when I uh, come to process patent, then in that case, uh, there are two types uh, uh, two things that I get. One is the act of using the process, uh, uh, and there can be a combination also. There can be a combination of product patent and also a process patent, subject to fulfillment of criteria under the patent side. So, if let's say I come up with a novel process of uh, uh, creating a chemical or uh, creating a pharmaceutical drug, uh, so in, and in in my process the efficacy is increasing or the purity of the compound is increasing. Uh, uh, significantly in such cases I can claim the process uh, uh, as a patent uh, under the patents act and uh, so act of using the process would be uh, one part of it and the outcome or the output that is coming out of that process is the product that is coming out of the process that can also be something which can be covered by the patent so here in the process patent I am covering the process and secondly the output of the process that is the product that is arriving uh, out of the process that is something which can be protected under the patent 
now this was uh, a brief background on the patent and uh, the sort of patents that are uh, uh, that can be granted or cannot be granted and uh, 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 broadly covering uh, uh, from that perspective because what is novelty uh, is something which uh, can be connected to the publication because when you publish something which has which has not been patented then it is something which is novelty killing what it means is uh, after I've done a research paper, I published a research paper uh, and I've uh, published my findings of the research paper. And then later, I, when I go to patent uh, uh, it before the patent office, the patent office would, uh, would cite my uh, publication and he will say, look at your paper and you have already published it. Now, how can I say that this is, a, this is something which is novel? Because when it is published, uh, it is already in the public domain and every, everyone has access to that. So uh, that would be something which is novelty killing. And in, when in novelty is killed, then one of the criteria uh, is not uh, fulfilled under the patent set, and that could lead to rejection of the patent under the patent set. Now, as far as publication is concerned, now we know, I mean, uh, uh, that uh, publications, uh, often the researchers and scholars, they prefer publications uh, to uh, uh, publication of the research paper instead of going to uh, going for patenting. Now, there are uh, multiple reasons for that. I've, I've tried to cover some of them. Uh, I'm sure there would be others, but broadly, uh, one is to increase the publication count because uh, uh, in, in the academia industry and in the uh, research industry, of course, there are peer recognitions which are important, uh, but at the same time, uh, we must not forget the patent protection because in some cases, patent protection is something which is uh, uh, much rewarding, not only in terms of uh, uh, the uh, the commercial ad value, but also in terms of the innovation that would be contributed to the uh, the society. So that is one one is uh, one part of it. Then again, uh, another reason for publication publication is uh, is the lack of awareness. I'm I'm sure. I mean, uh, as Ms. Jan pointed out correctly, that uh, this has certainly increased uh, in the last several years. And although Indian universities do tend to go for publications and then patenting, but yes, in the last 10, 15 years, we have seen uh, there is a, a change of direction and uh, we have uh, uh, like seen universities uh, who are now coming up with uh, their, their research is more concentrated uh, towards innovation and not just publication. Again, uh, the uh, another factor that comes in uh, between is the economic cost that is involved because uh, uh, and also the time uh, taken. Uh, now, as far as economic cost is concerned, I mean, patent protection uh, can be expensive, especially when, when there is something uh, which is uh, a breakthrough in, uh, in a technology. Uh, so maybe one country is fine, but when you go to different countries, because when you want to protect your invention in multiple countries, let's say, I've created uh, a unique invention or something, let's say a cell phone, a revolutionary invention. And uh, I want to stop everybody from using it. And I want to exploit the commercial uh, advantage of the invention. Then I would necessarily have to patent it across all the countries, wherever I'm going to launch the uh, product in the market. So what it does is now, I let's say I file in India today. Only one country may not be something uh, would be uh, which is a uh, very expensive but when i enter different territories uh, uh, let's say 20 50 countries i enter then obviously the cost is going to increase and uh, uh, in such cases of course we have to assess the commercial viability of the invention and we have to understand what sort of technology it is whether it is worth investing that kind of money or not so all those factors are there but as far as publication is concerned that is one factor that uh, obviously revolves around the minds of the uh, innovators and the scholars uh, uh, for which prevents them from uh, patenting the invention. Now, as far as uh, uh, patents are concerned and the research papers are concerned, both of them have a different way of writing. Like patent uh, writing is a different art and different uh, uh, niche altogether, whereas research paper is a different uh, 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 domain altogether. Research paper, we are doing something else which which uh, not covered by the patent and research is not uh, necessarily which which will lead to uh, an application uh, in the industry it need not be an invention it could be a publication of some findings based on some experiments and there are obviously uh, based on what is existing uh, uh, in the domain so uh, whereas patent has to necessarily cover what was the prior art 
what is the technical advancement that you are coming up with and uh, essentially uh, you have to fulfill the criteria of novelty inventive step and industrial applicability so looking from the problem uh, solution perspective so uh, when i'm uh, writing a patent then uh, of course it involves a lot of technical information as well and it involves uh, writing of claims uh, as to what you are claiming then again uh, claims have uh, have to be like uh, not to be too broad uh, otherwise it will be uh, uh, too generic and it could be covered by the prior art and it should not be too narrow uh, then it will be uh, uh, like then anyone can come up with a minor variation of it and they can come out of the uh, narrow claim so that is again something which is very technical in nature and it requires uh, assistance from patent attorney it requires a professional help so that is something which also a contribution or a contributory factor which prevents uh, uh, patenting in the uh, in the educational and the research industry. Now, uh, practically, uh, the uh, best approach is to file a patent and then go for the research publication because that will not kill your novelty. There are, of course, there are exceptions which I'll be dealing uh, in the uh, uh, in some time uh, in the next few slides. But uh, uh, from a uh, from a uh, practical point of view and from a legal point of view, uh, when you follow the uh, file patent first and then publish a later approach, then that is something which is uh, which does not have any legal implication. Uh, and uh, uh, the, in terms of protecting your patent uh, and even in litigation matters also, it, it becomes uh, important that you patent. And as uh, Ms. Jan also pointed out, uh, in uh, Japan, there are several examples of the universities where they pre-file the patent and they go for the publication. So that is the approach that they follow. What it does is it prevents uh, others from uh, taking the uh, invention away because you have already secured the priority date. And uh, later, the question of who created the invention or who was the true and first inventor of the invention, that does not arise because uh, you have already filed the patent. And in such cases, uh, your uh, 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 inventorship cannot be challenged in such cases. Now, whether to go for a publication or a patent, uh, that is something that has to be weighed uh, and it has to be understood from the perspective of uh, what we are doing. Uh, as I mentioned, that patent is something which is uh, uh, where you are coming up with a new invention, which has, uh, uh, which has to satisfy the criteria of patenting. Uh, so from, from that perspective, it is necessary uh, to have somebody who can advise and can uh, uh, a guide in the way whether we can consider patenting or not. But before I proceed further, I will just discuss uh, essentially what we do in the research uh, paper. So in research paper, generally what we do is we uh, like we see the existing research in a particular area and we based on the uh, existing research, we also do some further research. We make our thesis and we uh, give our we draw our analogies and we come up with something uh, which uh, uh, could be uh, considered. And then obviously those are subject to peer reviews as well. Uh, but ultimately, the uh, essentially, I would say the objective is to find a uh, disclose a finding uh, from an experiment or uh, from the existing uh, facts and figures. And that is something I would say uh, in research that we do. Uh, but what happens is, uh, as far as the patenting part is concerned, we do not research from the perspective of, uh, that is generally I'm talking about. I'm not, obviously there are research universities which also uh, contribute in innovation and uh, uh, in uh, in patenting and technology. But from a general perspective, what we do is we do not think it from the perspective of filing a patent or from uh, creating a product or a process which is innovative and which is novel and uh, in nature and which could be patented. So that is something which is, not the focus in the research papers. And that makes it different in, in terms of patenting. But of course, there are overlapping issues and uh, uh, you will find uh, ways where research paper has often uh, been uh, filed as a patent or even vice versa also has happened where patent is filed first and then research papers are filed later based on the findings uh, conducted in experiments and uh, trials uh, uh, concern, uh, of the invention. Now, as far as, uh, as I mentioned, publishing and patenting conundrum has been existing since many times. And uh, 
we have to consider uh, when to publish or when to patent first they obviously those are there are factors under the patent law as well uh, but as i mentioned that practically it is always advisable that you file your patent first and then you go for publication then whatever publication you do uh, you are covered you will not have any issues in in such uh, 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 like uh, disclosure that is made to the public now what why uh, i say, say so because uh, the publication can disclose the uh, the primary components or the major components of the invention and that could limit the patentability of the invention and again uh, if that limit is there then obviously the patent uh, the invention that i am seeking uh, uh, as patent that can be barred also because of the uh, prior uh, uh, publication of the invention as it will be a novelty killing publication in in such cases and uh, uh, now, as far as uh, as I mentioned, also practically, it does not uh, prohibit you from uh, uh, publishing the results later after the filing the application. Uh, so, what we do is we always file the application first, and then we come on to the research part of it, or the experimental or the uh, results part of it, and we we can publish it later as many times or whatever uh, existing uh, uh, contributions we can make in, in the research later after the invention is fine now as far as uh, uh, there are uh, importance of pro uh, patent protection before we do the publication uh, now what we do is in the research paper of course there are certain research ideas which are uh, path breaking and which are no which are novel in nature but if you do not patent it then you uh, run the risk that you will lose the uh, patent, uh, you lose the uh, the opportunity of patenting the patenting the novel idea that has come up in your mind. So, what it will do is the third parties which are there, which have read your research paper, uh, they can also create, uh, they can come up with a commercial product out of your research paper, and they can reap rewards out of the research that you have conducted. So, uh, from that perspective, if you file a patent application and you prosecute it, uh, then you can stop all those persons from uh, uh, coming up with a commercial uh, uh, technology that you have come up with in the research paper. So uh, that will always help you when, uh, in commercial manner to exploit the invention. And also it will stop others from using the uh, inventions without your permission. So uh, like, I mean, I'll, uh, for the sake of repetition, I mean, I'll uh, again say, I mean, that is generally the best approach is to uh, file the patent application and then go for the research. Uh, there are uh, restrictions in many countries where uh, if you have published uh, a research paper or any thesis or abstract or synopsis of your invention, which discloses the invention, then in that case, you cannot uh, uh, go to the con those countries and file your application for patent. Uh, there are, of course, exceptions like USA, you have Australia, Japan, and even India, where uh, there are certain exceptions where you can file it at a later date after publication. but that has to be, there are certain grounds that are uh, attached to it. Those grounds have to be fulfilled in order for you to claim uh, uh, such a grace period. <clears throat> like in the US also, you have a grace period of one year uh, when there is a uh, publication. Uh, but what happens is the uh, drawback of publication is that when you publish it and it becomes public, your competitors or uh, anybody in your industry, if uh, he reads an, uh, the publication and he can come up with a modification of that or uh, what could be termed as a technical advancement of the research paper or the research idea. And in that case, if he files a patent for that uh, modification or enhancement, uh, then your uh, research paper will be of uh, uh, no use because then the subsequent innovation has been already let's say he comes up with a patent uh, he files a patent then he will become the owner of a modification but let's say if you were uh, uh, you filed the application for patent on time of that research idea and later somebody else uh, and you had published that and later somebody else uh, uh, copies that and comes up with a modification then in that case uh, things will be different because in, uh, you you have already filed a patent application, uh, then you can stop the uh, subsequent uh, uh, 
uh, adopter of your technology uh, in, in in terms of uh, uh, i would say because that particular patent which is a modification of your idea that would be covered by your patent so in such cases you will have an edge in if you are filing an application but if you don't file an application first uh, and you publish it then it, it is prone to copying and then you may also run the risk that somebody else may file a patent application before you and uh, if it is a commercial su success at a later stage then you run the risk of losing uh, commercially and economically as well so that is uh, again uh, one of the importance of uh, patent protection now as far as uh, disclosure is concerned as i am saying publication or a disclosure uh, what is a public what is a public disclosure what constitutes a public disclosure now it need not be a scientific or a technical uh, uh, conference where i'm uh, uh, speaking or where i'm where i'm demonstrating the invention it need not be that it could be by way of publication uh, of an abstract or any uh, letter to editor of the general journal or by email or by public to public forums or by posters so there are n numbers of ways where uh, uh, you can disclose your invention to public so uh, as long as it is it has gone to the public then it, it becomes a public disclosure uh, now when something is disclosed to public then it is not considered as novel because then public will know about it so if i if you have come up with a research idea which is which you think is unique and novel in nature uh, and uh, before uh, going ahead with the patent uh, you uh, file uh, you i mean publish the application i'm sorry you publish the research paper then in that case it will uh, be a novelty killing because novelty will be lost because it it, uh, it is a part of public domain now and then once it is a part of public domain then it, you cannot satisfy the uh, criteria of novelty which is again one of the essential criteria for uh, uh, patent protection uh, there are certain examples, as I mentioned, so you have the publication in uh, uh, papers, journals, and magazines, uh, you have the publication uh, as abstracts or thesis. Uh, on internet also, let's say you publish something on the internet on one of the websites, which is uh, accessible to public. Uh, in that case, uh, it will again be a novelty killing publication when you go for the patenting. Uh, poster displays are there uh, uh, where you display a poster uh, of your invention uh, it could be uh, containing uh, several components of that uh, uh, where the invention is disclosed and uh, uh, that could again be a novelty killing publication uh, then again oral and casual disclosures we often go out for dinners and lunches and coffees and all sometimes we disclose it to uh, disclose it to public and friends and that the uh, of the invention or all the research that we have done uh, it could be uh, uh, novelty killing disclosure because many times if you do disclose it to third parties uh, what may happen uh, that the third parties may come up with uh, as i mentioned that they can come up with a modification of the same idea or they can come up with they can use this, your same idea to come up with a commercial product or they can also go ahead and they file the patent uh, of that invention so that is something uh, which can also constitute a public disclosure uh, under the patent act now of course i mean uh, there are uh, uh, again uh, uh, pros and cons of both the things uh, but we have to balance it out the patent part and the research publication part so so to uh, best protect the research idea or the research paper uh, there are certain uh, precautions that one may take uh, and uh, that may uh, i would say uh, to an extent it will uh, uh, it will reduce the risks that are associated when the publication takes place first and the patent application is filed later. Uh, of course, I, I maintain that the uh, filing of patent application is the first thing that you should do before public, any, any kind of publication. But assuming, let's say, practically, sometimes it is not possible and sometimes the research idea may not be that viable and sometimes we are not aware also of the commercial viability. In such cases, uh, what we can do is we can consider these uh, 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 examples i will just run through them so what is uh, there is that one of the things is when you are working in a setup where you are working in a research industry so of course you can discuss those with your supervisor and uh, 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 there are obviously incubation centers and there are research centers 
where a lot of people are working. So in such cases, uh, they can discuss whether a invention could be commercially viable or not, whether uh, in such cases we can restrict the publication and we can hold on until we file a patent application. So that is something which can be considered. Uh, again, uh, when you are publishing, uh, uh, when you intend to patent something and you are sending it for publication, there are publication guidelines which are available where a lot of publishers, they, uh, they are separate guidelines for publishing patents, uh, which are or the research which are covered by the patents or which are likely to be covered by patents. So in such cases, uh, the journal, uh, you can send a pre-submission query to the journal uh, about uh, such submissions. So uh, you can uh, modify the publication based on the uh, requirement and then uh, based on that, you can send it for publication. Uh, again, uh, uh, for one thing, another thing is that you can take commercial, uh, the professional help of the patent uh, attorneys to uh, uh, before you publish because uh, it has to be the invention if it is disclosed fully, uh, so, such that the manner of the working is disclosed in that case the novelty killing can be uh, it can be novelty killing but let's say if i am uh, just publishing a synopsis of the invention without disclosing the uh, major components or the uh, uh, the uh, i would say the kernel or the heart of the invention then in that case it may not be a novelty killing publication so those things can be uh, considered again uh, uh, you, uh, I mean, you have to, I mean, uh, essentially file a patent before you speak or in public or you publish your work. But even when you are, let's say, not uh, filing the patent, then you have to be cautious when you are speaking. You have to, uh, I would say, you can, uh, you, you can refrain from divulging too many details uh, concerning your invention, because if that is something which is being disclosed, then that would uh, be prone to copying and that would be prone to uh, patenting by others uh, without your knowledge. So in such cases, you will end up litigating, uh, uh, fighting for your title to the patent. That is something that has to be kept in mind. So instead of uh, spelling out each and every component, each and every element of your uh, research idea or invention, uh, you can broadly just outline your work in any publication instead of covering everything. So that uh, one may get a broad idea of your uh, research idea, but Without your uh, detail, uh, that person may not be able to exercise the research idea uh, commercially or practically. So that is some some of the those are some of the uh, uh, I would say precautions that one may take to prevent any uh, third party filing of patents or to prevent any exploitation of your research ideas. Again, uh, uh, when you are having a business discussion, when you are Let's say you are at a research stage, you have uh, come up with a research finding, uh, but before filing a patent or before uh, disclosing it to public, uh, you are discussing with third parties, investors or uh, uh, venture capitalists. So in that case, uh, cases, uh, it is uh, very important to have a confidentiality agreement in place. So what it will do is uh, the uh, person or the investor that is there, he will be then re uh, restricted to not disclose the invention that is being disclosed so that information that you are going to disclose has to be properly marked as confidential and you have to uh, ensure that uh, confidentiality agreements are in place so that the third party to whom you are disclosing they do not misappropriate the information that you have uh, uh, disclosed to them then again as i mentioned that instead of writing in detail maybe you can code your data or you can uh, or element or the principal components so that others don't understand uh, uh, the uh, invention and they are not able to practice. So there is something you should have to restrict, uh, which will uh, not allow the others from uh, commercially exploiting the invention. Uh, again, uh, professional help is something which you can take. And instead of being too specific and explicit, you can always make general statements about your uh, research idea. And uh, uh, then your research may be then uh, dependent on the uh, uh, the experiments that you have conducted, you can re refrain from publishing everything in the papers or in the abstract. So that would potentially be uh, important considering if you are filing a patent application later. Now, uh, as I mentioned, there are different types of uh, publications uh, uh, that can take place in terms of research paper. There are certain 
exceptions under the patent act uh, whereby the anticipation uh, does not take place of the patent application by your publication now there are broadly four or five exceptions so let's say there is uh, anticipation by previous publication now what it does is if it, if the applicant uh, proves that the publication was obtained uh, from the uh, applicant without his consent uh, or uh, uh, any person uh, who's deriving the uh, uh, like the authority from the patentee or the applicant so in such cases then it will not be anticipated so for example let's say i go to a, a conference or i publish a research paper or a synopsis uh, and i disclose the uh, research idea in a conference and after that somebody else uh, files for an application uh, for the patent or somebody else uh, may say that uh, this has been disclosed but in such cases uh, if you have filed the complete specification within 12 months of such disclosure then in that case that will not be uh, an anticipation because uh, what it will do is because it has been published without your consent assuming uh, if you are able to prove so you have to show that the applicant's uh, invention was uh, published by a third party and without the applicant's consent so these two things you have to prove and after that only uh, when you file the application then uh, you can uh, 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 like your invention will not be anticipated by the prior publication but again uh, as i mentioned that uh, if you file the if assuming a situation where you had filed the application before publishing so in that case the anticipation would not have arrived uh, but here since you did not file the application but you published uh, the research uh, before and somebody else uh, uh, has taken your uh, uh, research idea and he has published without your consent then in that case anticipation uh, can be av like avoided uh, under the patent act and uh, under this provision there are other uh, uh, exceptions so for example when you are communicating the invention to the government or any person authorized by the government for investigation of the invention or its merit so a lot of time government may approach uh, uh, any inventors uh, uh, who may not have filed the application of, for patent uh, but uh, there are many times uh, research grants given uh, to uh, different persons for creating something and in such cases the government sometimes approaches or any authorized person of the government approaches the inventor and uh, they understand and they they try and investigate the merits of the invention uh, in such cases when you file the specification within one year of such disclosure then in that case uh, your uh, application will not be considered as uh, anticipated again uh, uh, anticipation by public display now there are another uh, there's another provision where when you uh, do a public display of your research in such cases uh, in what uh, what are the situation or the conditions in which cases the anticipation by public display will not be uh, novelty killing for your application so let's say when an invention is displayed in an exhibition uh, which has been extended by the central government there are various conferences where uh, central government extends uh, the provision of anticipation by public display where in such cases uh, the uh, when such public display takes place then in, in such cases your application will not be uh, anticipated by a uh, display uh, uh, in such exhibitions then again if let's say pursuant to uh, such exhibitions there is a publication of your research then also uh, that anticipation uh, will not take place uh, uh, under this provision uh third is when somebody uh, uses uh, without your consent uh, the any displays the the uh, research idea without your consent in such cases again uh, uh, you the an invention will not be anticipated uh, when you are disclosing the invention to a learned society uh, or publishing the invention uh, in a learned society in in that case uh, again the publication uh, by public display will not amount to an anticipation under the patent act subject to you filing the patent application within 12 months uh, of the of the display so if today the display has taken place uh, then within 12 months you have to file the application and uh, uh, you have to uh, then only you'll be able to uh, like uh, uh, get away from the anticipation under the public display uh then you have the anticipation by public working now let's say there are inventions where 
you cannot uh, like uh, get away without working off those inventions so you have to conserve uh, tries and experiments and all uh, so in uh, to understand the nature of the invention and to uh, to uh, test the invention properly before you launch it in the market so when you are doing a public working in that case such experiments or trials will not be uh, considered as novelty killing and they will not be considered as uh, an anticipation uh, by public working but uh, it is what is important here is that uh, the use uh, or the uh, trial that cannot be a commercial uh, that cannot be in commercial manner so you cannot use it commercially uh, that the use has to be restricted uh, only to the uh, trial and experiment purpose and only in cases where the uh, the nature of invention does not permit uh, private uh, uh, trials and experiment it has to be public let's say something uh, invention that is something which is very big it occupies a lot of space so in that case you are doing it in open public so in such cases uh, you can uh, do a public display and then later file an application uh, uh, within 12 months then in that case it will not be deemed to be anticipated under the patents act uh, another example is where now uh, you may be aware there are two types of uh, patent applications under the patent act one is your uh, provisional application and one is your uh, complete uh, application or complete specification so in provisional application a uh, lot of information is not required if you have a broad idea uh, of the invention what you are protecting you can put that you don't have to even submit the drawings and submit the claims uh, but it has to follow the complete specification within 12 months of filing the provisional specification that is a mandatory requirement under the patents act uh, in such cases uh, let's say i file a provisional application today for an invention and uh, uh, i have the broad idea in my mind what sort of invention i have created the research idea that i've come up with and file the application and i start practicing the invention commercially uh, before i protect the invention uh, in the sense that before i file the complete specification so in that case uh, my invention will not be anticipated by reason of i not filing the complete specification because i have secured the priority date of the invention by filing a complete uh, by filing a provisional uh, for provisional specification uh, I can still wait un uh, until the next 12 months to file my complete specification. So, by reason of not filing the complete specification, uh, the invention will not be deemed to be anticipated under the patent side. So, that is another uh, uh, the exception for uh, uh, patenting, uh, the anticipation under the patent side. Now, as now, I mean. Um, uh, by now you would have understood the importance of uh, uh, patenting first and publishing later um, of course there are uh, exceptions to it and uh, we have to obviously weigh the pros and cons and we have to understand the uh, the stage of the invention and what sort of invention we are going to practice and uh, whether it would make commercial sense uh, for the invention whether it is commercially viable or not uh, all those things have to be considered but uh, from a practical perspective, patent is much more valuable uh, for a researcher because what happens is when you patent it and later uh, if uh, you can reap the rewards of the patent uh, invention because you can then license it out to uh, others and then when they use it, you will reap the benefits out of it. But uh, assume, uh, assuming a situation where you just publish the research findings and you did not do anything about it, then somebody else starts uh, using your research idea to uh, go commercial and he starts using the uh, commercial idea for manufacturing the commercial product then he will derive the benefits out of it and again the invention will be in public domain because nobody has protected it or uh, assuming another situation where that person himself uh, copies the idea and he himself files a patent by filing a modification or any variation of that and uh, you don't know anything about it so that person will uh, reap the benefits of the research idea that you have. So, uh, publication, of course, has advantages, but patent uh, coupled with publication is something that is uh, that one should target. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, it's a negative right, and it will give you a lot of competitive edge in the market when you are coming up with a path-breaking product, or even for a small invention. It need not be a complex invention, as I discussed earlier, also, and uh, 
uh, as we all know that patent is something uh, which is the uh, the uh, uh, first step towards commercialization so when you patent something uh, then there are more opportunities that will come your way for commercialization of the invention and it will reap you commercially as well so that's it from my side i'll be happy to uh, take any questions if anyone has I would like to invite uh, any questions if there are. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. It was a very informative session, and indeed, we are grateful for this session. I would like to thank you on behalf of the team from the Tanker Mahavir University. I would also like to express my deep respect and appreciation to the Center for IPR Promotion and Management and Government of India for helping us organize these sessions, especially uh, you, sir, and Ms. Vishri Kurana. Thank you all for your attention and information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you.